In this video, we get the first brew in on the Brewzilla 65 liter from Kegland, and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and brew day videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. So we did the overview on this 65 liter Brewzilla unit recently, and I wanted to get a brew day in on it. Spring is coming around the corner. Kelly's been wanting me to brew a lager. I have never brewed a lager other than a small batch. And the ingredients are very simple as well. It is 18 pounds of Pilsner malt and three pounds of Maris Otter. I put the Maris Otter in there, just give it a little bit of character and a little bit of color. And then as far as the hop schedule goes, I'm using Czech saws, and I'm gonna put two ounces in at the boil and then one ounce in at two minutes till the boil is over. For the yeast, I'm gonna be using a WLP 925, and that's the White Labs High Pressure Lager Yeast. And you can ferment this yeast under pressure and actually ferment it at ale temperatures and have the same if not better results than if you did the normal lagering process. So I'm gonna test that out, see how that comes out. And without further ado, let's get into the mash. Just a quick note on my water profile. I did use all RO water. I put 1.2 grams of calcium chloride and 2.5 grams of gypsum in the mash, as well as six milliliters of lactic acid. All right, so the mash details are as follows. I'm gonna mash in at uh, 148 degrees, and I'm gonna mash for an hour. So with my calculations, I'm working on the profile, equipment profile and beersmith for this system. And so I've got uh, 12 gallons of water, and I'm at 152 for the mash in temperature. All right, here we go. Smells good already. Get this stirred in really good. Make sure there's no dough balls in there. I am not using any rice holes or anything like that. I want to see what the performance of the bottom screen is. They did not include a second screen with the Brazilla unit. So I am assuming that there's more surface area on the bottom screen. Well, I mean, I know there's more surface area on the bottom screen, but uh, I would imagine that's gonna help with the circulation of the mash as well as the sparge, so. All right, there's all the Pilsner malt in. All right, get this all stirred in. Looks like a decently thin mash. It's definitely not too thick, at least with the profile that uh, I'm using, so I'm going to be sparging with like three and a half gallons of uh, water, so it won't be a huge sparge, and that could probably be adjusted as you do larger grain bills. You can sparge a little bit more just so that you don't have too much uh, liquid and grain in there. And as you can see, the top of the malt pipe is right at the top of the level of the mash here, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let this settle for just a few minutes and then uh, I'll put the mesh or the malt pipe drain, center drain extension on there and uh, we'll get to recirculating. So we'll see how that goes, should be interesting. All right, so it's been a few minutes and I went ahead and pulled the rubber stopper off. I should have filmed it because it was kind of interesting. There was a bunch of liquid that came up out of it and kind of pushed any of the grain away. So you can't see it, but I've actually got the top screen in and it fits really, really tight down in there. And I've got the extension on top. And so we're gonna set our mash at 148. And then for the mash, I'm just gonna turn on the 500 and the 1000 watt, just so we're using 1500 watts to maintain the mash. And we'll see how that goes. So we'll put the lid back on. Go ahead and turn this down. And we'll turn the pump on. And we'll start our recirculation and we'll see how the grain bed flows. So we'll turn it up and see what we get here. Initial impressions are that it's uh, circulating pretty good. So I'm not seeing it rise at all. Let me open it up a little more here and see what we get. Got a nice little whirlpool on the top here. And that is wide open. Let's see if I can get 
this to get down in the stream a little better there. And it looks like we are circulating at 100% wide open. It's kind of risen up just a little bit on the center drain, but not much at all, which is good. So that is looking pretty good. All right, well, I'm gonna let it mash for a while and uh, we'll come back once, uh, mash is gonna clear up some. So we'll come back here in a little bit and show you what that looks like. All right, so we reached the end of the mash and I'm actually ramping it up for a mash out. And I don't know if you can see or not, but I kind of cleared off the window, but it is a beautiful color and I can see the screen through the bottom of there. So I did throttle the flow back just a little bit, just cause it was like stirring up a bunch of grain and everything. And I kind of wanted to let everything settle down. So it's been flowing good. I did have one little issue in the beginning where it dropped down to 143, I think it was. I got some video I'll show here. And I got a little concerned, so I bumped it up to 149 and it kicked back up. And then after that one little blip, it has not had an issue since then. So I don't know if it was like an auto tune type situation that it went through or what, but uh, it held 140. I couldn't get it to go on 148, so I went with the 147. And uh, it's held 147 the entire, actually a little bit more than an hour because I was cleaning the fermenters and stuff. So, but it looks really, really clear and looks really, really good. So, I'm gonna wrap up to 170, pull the malt pipe up, and then uh, I've got the little brother over here, over there, <laughs> warming up the sparge water. So, we'll get to that here in just a few minutes. All right, so we've come to the end of the temperature raise for mash out. I am going to attempt to raise this malt pipe <laughs> myself. All right, moment of truth. Oh my God, that thing is heavy. Not for the faint of heart, for sure. All right, so I got the Robo Brew 35 liter back here, using it for a hot liquor tank. I'm going to slowly sparge with it. I'll do like a fly sparge and uh, we'll collect our wort and then we'll be on to the boil. So we'll be back. Holy crap, that thing is heavy. All right, so I've got the Robo Brew with the pump on just a little bit and uh, it's gonna go ahead and sparge over the top of this. I've actually got four gallons in there because I know it, at the once it gets to the bottom, it leaves a little bit behind. But uh, looks like it's sparging okay. From what I can tell, we're probably, uh, I'd say we're probably at the 10 gallon mark, something like that, I'm thinking. Can't see. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's probably about 10 or 11 gallons. I will continue to sparge this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the elements on, turn all of them on, and uh, put this thing up to probably 215 degrees so we can get our boil. And uh, we'll be back shortly. All right, so got everything collected. Actually, you want a little bit, about 13 and a half gallons, so a little bit more than what I was figuring on, but that's all right. Look at how clear that is. I mean, that is some clear wort. Let me tell you what, it is very clear. Got a little bit of sediment rolling around in it from the grain, but not a lot. So I am really happy with the way that that is looking. So, all right. So I just want to kind of quickly give you an update here. It's coming up to a boil and it started to boil over. So just if you haven't used an electric system before, the fastest way to deal with the boil over in one of these type systems is to just um, go ahead and turn the elements off. And that is usually what will help you the most, typically. So that is what I did was I turned the elements off and then let the hot break settle back down. And then now I'm gonna bring it back up to a boil again and see what we have. A lot of times it'll dissipate and go down into the wart. So looks like that is what we're gonna have happening here. So looks like it's starting to come to a nice boil. Well, we are several minutes into the boil now and it is boiling really well. So, I mean, it was over 13 gallons and it's boiled off a little bit now, but I tell you what, I think it's got a good boil. 
Um, had my efficiency in the recipe set to 72%, and my pre-boil gravity was supposed to be 1045. I took a reading right as it came to a boil, and I was right at 1045. So first time out, I hit the numbers that I had in the recipe at least, which I am completely fine with that. So we'll keep boiling, and uh, we'll be back here in a little bit. Right, so the boil is over, and I just started a timer. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, about a minute and a half, 45 seconds ago, something like that. I'm gonna try to see how long it takes to chill down. I'm just gonna stir it manually like this for a little bit and uh, go with that. So I will be back as soon as we get it chilled down and let you know how long it took. All right, so I found a length of hose and got the pump running and circulating. So we're down to 68 degrees at 24 minutes. My groundwater temperature, I think is about 55 or 60 degrees. So, I mean, it's not a jaded chiller, but it does get the job done. Uh, probably not as fast as some of the others, or maybe even a counterflow chiller. But uh, looks like it got it chilled down where we need to be at. So I'm going to transfer over to the fermenters, and then I will be back with my final thoughts on the day. Someone asked me about the bottom of the unit after a brew day. And here's some footage of it, and I just wanted to kind of review that with, with everyone just so they could see. This is just after doing like a quick rinse and just a light scrub with like a scotch Bright pad. I haven't put any PBW or anything like that in yet. Um, Key from Kegland did tell me that they have used ultra low wattage density elements in the system. So that's one of those things that's uh, really nice and it's not scorching on the bottom. I just want to clarify something real quick before I get to my final thoughts. When the Brazil was being shipped to me, there was a winter storm that occurred and it got shipped back and forth between depots here and there back, you know, past our location back up to another location. So that probably did contribute to some of the damage. I haven't heard of anybody else having any damage with their unit. So here are my final thoughts. If you are a brewer of session beers and lower gravity beers in a five gallon batch, probably not the unit for you because of the fact that you're gonna have such little space in the bottom of the malt pipe for your grain. And you may not have as good of efficiency as you might with the smaller version of the Robo Brew. But if you are a person that is looking to do full batch, you know, no sparge boil, volumes on a five gallon batch definitely would be a good system for that if you want to crank out an occasional 10 gallon batch and do some sparging definitely will work for that at the price point of 6.99 you know there's not a lot of competition that's you know producing batches this size with that type of system so you know if you're into that type of thing obviously you're going to make your own decision you know but as far as my experience goes i didn't have any problem with the flow through the malt pipe no stuck sparges anything like that um, the, you know, the, as far as the, the uh, sparging goes, it flowed great through the system, had no issues with that. The bottom screen was good as far as catching the hops. I know there was a pretty good layer of hops on the bottom of it whenever I got done brewing and, uh, didn't have any issue with that. The chillers, maybe not the greatest in the world, but it got the job done. So, you know, it, it's one of those things that comes with it. So if you want to upgrade, that might be something you upgrade on later. But as far as the system goes, I mean, I think it worked as expected and I didn't have any issues with it. I'm gonna to continue to work on the profile for it because I think it had a little bit too much mash water. So I'm gonna go back and adjust that and I might brew one more time on it before I release the profile. But if you wanna learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and product reviews just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video. And that's Kelly cleaning for me. I dumped all the grain in the sink where it shouldn't have been by trying to put it in a trash bag. So yay me. Thanks for thanks for cleaning up, honey. You're welcome.